Welcome back to the NFL Imperialism franchise, a series where I play an entire NFL season using the Imperialism idea. This is episode 4, so if you want to get caught up, I'll have a playlist linked in the description. So obviously, here's your quick spoiler warning right before we jump into a recap of the previous episode. Previously on the Imperialism franchise. But I can get another 3 points up, and that's exactly what I'll do. We'll make it 34-21 to 21 now. Anyways, all I gotta do is hope the Lions not score a touchdown to win the game. You gotta be fun. Double trouble power up in Oklahoma, which was finally obtained by the Cowboys, it only took seven weeks. Then the second rewind power of the series went to the Las Vegas Raiders out west. I had to go with someone more fitting in the silver and black. Charles Woodson. And we're looking to tie this game up with, you know, a quarterback sneak. Second down and nine. Well, here it comes again. The same old animation and the same old sauce gardener. Yeah, this game made me cry myself to sleep and I find Jamar Chase in the elbow of the end zone. It's gonna make it 17 to three. I'm speeding through this game because nothing really eventful happened. It was kind of a slugfest. I really don't know how this team was undefeated, but we ended up winning 24 to three. And those are our three teams eliminated. The Saints, Seahawks, and Commanders. So 23 teams remain, and by the end of this episode, there will be 20. Gone are the Seahawks, the Saints, and the Commanders, and just like following the trend of the last episodes, there will be a power-up placed on those three territories. We are right next to Washington's land, so maybe, just maybe, we do get a power-up here. Let's see what it is, though. Instead of choosing the power-ups myself, I'm gonna let the wheel decide what power-ups are placed on the map each episode from here on out. I think we've introduced enough power-ups to the series already. So on Washington's land, we're gonna get the juiced power-up. That's pretty solid. All right, now it's between Seattle and New Orleans. It's going to land on Seattle. And our second power-up placed will be the Rewind power-up, again being used. And obviously that leaves New Orleans territory to take home the Landmine power down. As a refresher, the Juice power-up adds five overall to your top three players. Rewind brings a 99 legend back from the past, and Landmine kills off your best player. So it's time to begin week 10. Where are we heading? I'm hoping we claim that power-up juiced. We, oh, we actually might do so. This is how close we were to doing so, but instead we end up hitting this peninsula-shaped land, which is owned by the Carolina Panthers. So our Week 10 game is against the Carolina Panthers, who keep in mind, they're a top three team in the league right now. Let's just see if we can get a win. I don't think I've ever been this scared to put the Panthers in my life, but we're going to start out pretty strong. This is Jamar Chase in the first down and the bully. At the 33, I'll wind this one up again. We'll hit Chase to the 40 now and second down and 10 with four minutes left in the first quarter here comes the reckoning it's a horrible pick and obviously it's one of those stupid animations where the defender just teleports in front of the ball anyways the panthers couldn't convert so i'm going for a touchdown here to tyree kill somehow he brings us in with one hand and he gets both feet in bounds highlight of the series so far as you can see tyree kill just blasts through the defense Gets off to the races, and he brings this one in. He looks to be in. This is a touchdown. We're going to take the lead over the Panthers. I get the ball back. It's third down and 15, but no worries. A huge completion here. It's what I've been doing all game. Tyree Kill has put us to the 35 in Panthers territory. Now another third down. Once again, I answer pretty strongly going to Pat Fryermuth. Getting a first down inside the 20-yard line. Now, first down and goal. Hand this one off to Najee Harris. Look, it would not be a complete NIF game without Najee Harris scoring a rushing touchdown. So, we have a comfortable 14-point lead against the number one team in the nation. Second down and eight. I go for a really bad pass. I mean, I have to get my eyes checked for that one. I mean, maybe LASIK eye surgery or something. I don't know. I throw a pick six. 14-7 to seven now. And before you know it, I'd have the game tied up at 14. Great. I'm just going to go for a deep ball here on third down and 10 i'm getting kind of impatient obviously it's underthrown. what do i expect there and i get the ball back starting into the next half once again i throw another interception let's uh just ignore the fact that that's interception number four for this game i couldn't show you the fourth one because i was too embarrassed uh but we're gonna get back on track now even though we lost the lead we are choking a 14-0 lead panthers have scored 21 straight points but at least Jamar Chase can still catch the football. That's all that matters. And so look at this. Another great catch. First down and 10 to the 40 for Tyreek Hill this time. Second down and 11. I go short to Tyreek Hill once again. Huge move. We're inside the five with this. And second down and goal. Obviously on a quarterback sneak from the one yard. What is new? Kenny Pickett has tied this game up at 21. A much needed touchdown drive. Now fourth quarter. Three minutes left. I'm going down the field. And once again, these animations are really screwing me. But I also can't say much because I also just suck at this game. Interception number five and obviously they get a good return as well and they make it 20 at the 21 i have no timeouts in one minute i'm just going up the field and i i just don't know what to say anymore i full heartedly deserve this loss 20 at the 21 go ahead and take away my best player i just can't say anything else 
In week 10, we forced so many balls down the defenders' throats that I almost should be in the same jail cell as Jackson Mahomes. No thanks to our staggering six interceptions, Tyreek Hill threw up the peace sign and he is joining forces with the Dynasty Panthers. We had a lot of other important moves, including TJ Watt becoming a giant, Charles Woodson's now a ram, Roquan Smith is an eagle, and with the Cowboys owning the double triple power up, they completely robbed the Broncos of a future by taking two 99s away, Travis Kelsey and Aaron Donald. One power up was claimed and it was the third rewind of the series. This time, it's going to the Niners. I didn't even need to use my brain for this one, which is fortunate considering I lost all my brain power last game. Jerry Rice has joined the series, and he is a 99 overall receiver for the Bay. You know, half of me is a little salty for last game, but other half of me is really proud of these Carolina Panthers because they are the number one team through 10 weeks in this league. They are 8-2. But of course, they are trailed shortly by the Niners, Jets, Dolphins, and Chiefs. They all have 7 or 6 wins. The Chargers are climbing, though. Their only difference is they have 3 losses. And as well, the Broncos and Falcons are pretty surprising, too. They're at 7-8. and eight. Week 10, we have a lot of competitive teams through here. A lot of teams are just 1 one loss difference would bring even record, but these teams are right above us. And on our third page, you can see we're only three spots out from being on the hot seat. Currently in jeopardy right now is the Raiders, the Bears, and the Browns. We're not too far off of that. It's going to get tough. I mean, we are narrowing it down pretty fast. We should be fine. We just need to win at least one game this episode, and we should be able to stay. And as a reminder, here's the fourth tab. All these teams are eliminated. You can check them out right here. Even though we lost a good portion of land to the Carolina Panthers, we still have a good shot at getting this power up. Hopefully, we get it this time. I beg you, please point down into the right. I think that has it. That is really close. Yeah, it has it. Look, just barely. You can see a smudge of white between this red line, which shows it hits the white territory first, which means for the first time of this series, us, the Pittsburgh Steelers, are claiming a power up. So currently our top three players are Cameron Hayward, Jamar Chase, and Mika Fitzpatrick. All three of these will add plus five to their overalls. And by doing so, Cameron Hayward's now a 98 overall, Jamar Chase is a 97, and Mika Fitzpatrick's a 97. So that's pretty helpful. Not to mention, this also counts as an expansion for us, so that's going to help us on the standings. And considering since we're the only team that has to play 17 games, we're actually at a pretty good advantage because after we do an expansion, we get to play a game. For these other teams, when they do an expansion, that's all they get to do for the week. So this is for our week 11 game. We do not get it skipped. We're going to the right still. And clearly, we're going to have a rematch. It's a division rival, Baltimore Ravens. Hopefully, we can get back on track and get back in the positives here. Week 11. So you know my philosophy. I do not show you a punt unless the punt is cool. 4th down and 15, I'm punting from the 13 yard line. They're going to get a solid return here. I'm going for a hit stick. I completely embarrassed myself, but here it comes. Another hit stick. This one connects, and I believe Derek Watt picks up the football. So we have the ball at the 45-yard line. That was my exact intentions right there. So we end up scoring a field goal off of that, but we got the ball back the next drive, already in the 20-yard line, and it's a touchdown to the left corner. This one hits Jamar Chase, our new wide receiver one since losing Tyreek Hill. And the Ravens are really just selling. I really don't know what they're doing. I'm just chipping away all the way down the field. I'm about to make this set. 17 to nothing, and I'm going to do exactly that here. Najee Harris continuing with his streak, getting in the end zone every single game at this point. It's 17 to nothing. We are just laying the hammer down on Baltimore. And I hate to break it to you, but it would just continue, and it just gets worse and worse. It's now 24 to nothing, and also a Kenny Pickett quarterback sneak. You can't forget that every single game. And I'm just going to skip through a lot of this game and go all the way to the fourth quarter because this game was basically just a blowout. It's kind of boring. Probably the shortest game you've seen so far, but we ended up beating the Ravens 34 to 13, which is not good for them because they are on the verge of elimination now after that horrible loss. Week 11 got us back on track with a dominating victory over the Ravens. I took a surprising steal, but I think this is the wise one. Justin Tucker will now be kicking for the Steelers. Other moves include Stephon Diggs to the Packers. The Panthers get even more stacked by adding Deion Sanders, and Lane Johnson reunites with the Eagles. The final power down was used, unfortunately, by the Cowboys, which will force them to delete their best player, that being Aaron Donald. Now, Aaron Donald does have a chance to return this series. It would just require a team to achieve the resurrection power up. So week 11 standings, the Carolina Panthers are the first team in this series that will clinch 
a positive record. They have nine wins. The lowest they can go is nine and eight. Good for them. And a little bit of movement on the right side of this. The Jets, Chargers, Broncos, and Rams are all up there. Second page, the Packers and Bills are climbing. They're up to six wins. And you can see us getting that win. We get bumped up to the 14th spot, which is just at the threshold to make the playoffs. We need to stay at here. And here's the danger zone. You can see the Bears are actually clawing themselves out of the gutter right now. They won two games in a row. They're at five and five now. Good for them. But right now, you can see the three teams that are in danger of getting eliminated. One of them basically already is, is the Vikings, Ravens, and Browns. Definitely kind of surprising, but you can see we're already narrowing it down quite a bit. So 21 through 23, there's not a lot of teams left after this. And to get a reminder, here's our fallen soldiers from Seahawks to the Texans, 25th to 32nd. Well, week 12 is upon us and three teams will be eliminated by the end of it. I'm pretty sure I've played every single team that I share border with, but it's going to happen a lot in this series. A lot of repeat games is basically the whole twist of this. But let's just see who it's going to be this time. I think that's going up north of the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, there's nobody else around in this area. I can't remember if I played the Bills or not, but either way, we're going to Buffalo for week 12. Let's pull out a win. <laughs> The rematch against Buffalo, we're going to start down by three, but not after I make a huge... Okay, never mind. Wait, let's go again with these stupid Superman animations. I'm really sure he can do that exact same play in real life. Well, we're going to start off down by ten now. I'm going to get Najee Harris involved because he's the lifeline of this Pittsburgh Steelers team. That's our first first down. And now third down and 12. You already know I connect these. It was very close, though. I'm actually fourth down and one, but I did end up getting that one. So it's now fourth down and five on a new set of downs, and I have to kick a field goal here. But I put it through even with the ice effect, so it's 10 to 3, not too bad. I'm going to see if you guys can notice the mistake there, what I did with that field goal kick. Maybe you guys will know. Anyways, we're down 17 to 3 now as the Bills score a touchdown. I get Najee Harris to a first down pickup. And now third down and 17, I took a sack, but thankfully I get it all back with Jamar Chase. I really have no clue why there's no spike ball button at this point of the game, but it does not matter because I convert with a touchdown with about 15 seconds left to Jamar Chase. It's 17 to 10 now. And getting the ball back after halftime, I'm down by a touchdown I barely bring out the animation here I got kind of lucky it was a five yard gain turned into about a 20 yard gain for George Pickens and third down and one I'm able to drive my way all the way down for Najee Harris guess what again he's gonna train his way in for a rushing touchdown and we've tied this game up at 17 apiece now third down and four I get the ball back in the fourth quarter looking to take a lead after a huge comeback but I cannot convert here it stays a fourth down and four but we can take the three points, and we'll still take a lead here. That is really promising. It'll be 20-17. to 17. Now, the Bills would end up tying that, so we have four minutes left, and I'm going to go short. Oh, what is up with these stupid dive animations? Can Jordavius White do that in real life? I don't think I've ever seen the man do that. Now, fourth down and five. I was able to convert here with Patty Free, which is good because it's going to put us back in range to get a field goal to win this game. Actually, we don't even feel good. We're down by a touchdown now after that pick. But thankfully, I'm converting on fourth downs. Jamar Chase gets shifty. That's a first down. And I don't know how I got this one off. This one really should have been a pick out of all those stupid picks we have. That one was the most deserving. But we tied the game up with this George Pickens touchdown catch as he goes right in front of the defender. And it's going to put it at 27 apiece. Now in overtime, I'm just going to speed it all the way through because all I really did was run the football over and over and over again. And I eventually did end up getting to third down and goal. Where you see what we're going to do is we're just going to hit the little elbow pass right here to Deontay Johnson. We have a touchdown lead. Now remember, it is new overtime rules, so this is not game over. The Bills get a chance to respond, and guess what? They do exactly that. So it's tie game, and we're also in double overtime now, but I get a huge connection here with Fryermuth, and that's a first down 10 to the 33-yard line, which is basically setting up a game-winning field goal at this point. It is sudden death. So I drive my way to the 9-yard line. Maybe you can see the mistake here. It's Justin Tucker's not in the game, but it doesn't matter because Boswell is going to nail this one. Yes, I forgot to put Justin Tucker in this whole entire game. Oh, well, I'll do it next at week. But we end up winning 37-34, probably one of our best games so far in the season. One of our best games of the season sprouted from our Week 12 victory in double overtime over the Buffalo Bills, putting us at a safe 7-5 record. I saw the BS Tredavious White was able to accomplish in that game, so let's hope he does the same for us. Other movements include four big receiver changes. Jerry Rice goes to the Chargers, Stephon Diggs finds his way back to Minnesota, Travis Kelsey is a Chief again, and Devontae Adams joins the Broncos. 
Also, the Panthers lost this week, resulting in Deion Sanders going back to the Falcons. All right, it's standing update time. Time to reveal the three teams that are eliminated. But first, let's take a look at the top of the pack. The Panthers still up there at 9-3. and three. Just a few swaps here and there, but for the most part, it's the same teams. The Eagles have made their way up to the top page, though. They're at a 7-4-1 record. And on the second page, you can see we are climbing. I forgot to put our expansion last week, so we are sitting at 7-5-1. and one, And that puts us at the 11th ranked team, so that's pretty comfortable for the time being. But on the third page, you can see the three teams that are eliminated. First, we'll start with the Lions, Giants, Bears, and Bengals, who all just barely survive, especially the Bengals, which leaves the three eliminated teams to be the Raiders, the Ravens, and the Browns. So now we're getting to the part of the series where the good teams are starting to drop. Once again, there can only be 14 teams left, and I see some pretty solid teams on this page right here. And just a reminder, here's the other eight teams which have already been eliminated, including the Seahawks to the Texans, 25th to 32nd. And this is what we're left with at the end of week 12. Three new white spaces on the map, and down to 20 teams. And it looks like we have another shot and another power-up next episode. It's either going to be us or the Eagles. And with both the Ravens and Browns eliminated, the only other division rival left left with us is the Bengals, but it doesn't even feel like it because they were banished to South Florida, which is the worst punishment anyone can ever suffer. But there's only six more teams left to be eliminated before we start the playoffs. This is getting intense. Thank you guys for keeping up with this series, and I will see you guys for episode five, where we will narrow it down to 17 total teams. See you then, and thanks for watching.